Alright guys, so obviously we're not going to recap the entirety of Bethesda Game Studios E3 press conference. It's like an hour long or whatever. And there's a lot of filler stuff, right? We have these weird ass like cartoon game Sar Captain Keen or some bullshit or something Keen. I don't remember. What was it called? Commander Keen. This shit was weird as hell, my dude. Um, and then there's like, you know, Elder Scrolls Online update, Elder Scrolls Legends update, Elder Scrolls Blades update. A lot of filler stuff, right? We don't need to recap that. But there are a few things that I do want to touch on. First off, as you can see right here on screen, they are adding a Battle Royale mode to Fallout 76. That's right. Battle Royale in 2019 that's still going on apparently. At this point, dude, if you're making a Battle Royale game in 2019 or adding a Battle Royale mode to your game in 2019, you're clearly just trying to ride the popularity wave. Like, that's beyond obvious. Um, it's also a 52-player Battle Royale. D does, does Fallout 76 even have 52 players left? So, obviously, I'm taking shots at Fallout 76 to be a little bit funny, but to be honest, I feel like it's going to be kind of hard to get a, a full session going because even, like, let's say Black Ops 4, which a lot of people hated on the game, it was the first one to introduce a Battle Royale mode. Even the worst Call of Duty still has, like, millions of people playing it, right? And even then, it was kind of hard to get a full lobby for Blackout, which is the Battle Royale mode. And I imagine a game like this that they try to say that there's millions of people playing the game, which I think is an absolute lie. You might have tens of thousands, maybe break into 100,000 people playing the game, right? But I feel like it's going to be kind of complicated to get a full 52-player lobby for the Battle Royale mode in Fallout 76 consistently. Also, I'm not sure how long they've been developing this, but it resembles Firestorm a lot, which is the Battle Royale mode for, I believe, Battlefield 5, I think is what it is, where they introduced Battle Royale. Uh, it's just like fire closing in the entire time. They actually have Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash playing in the background of the trailer. It's like... So I don't know if they've been doing this for a long time, for the past year or so, or however long, but it looks a lot like a different Battle Royale mode. Like, they oh, they couldn't come up with something else, like a Radiation Storm. Why wouldn't they just do a Radiation Storm closing in? Doesn't that literally make sense for Fallout? I don't know. Anyways. The quality looks like ass, but for me, Twitter videos load like absolute shit. But one positive thing we can say about Fallout 76 is with the Wastelanders update later this year, they are actually adding human NPCs to the world. This is, I, this is a positive. This is something that should have been in the game from the beginning. I think we can all agree on that. But at least it is coming to the game. And there's going to be dialogue, as you can see here, dialogue choices. I don't know exactly how impactful the choices are going to be. They're kind of talking about that a little bit. But at least there's going to be dialogue something. It looks like the old school Fallout, too. It's not a, you know, the, there is four choices right here. Actually, it's based on, uh, now that I'm looking at it, it says Perception Charisma. There's actually, like, based on your stats potentially so this looks good this is like fallout 3 fallout new vegas type of dialogue potentially and human npcs and you're not just talking to notes and reading notes and terminals and stuff so this is a positive for fallout 76 at least and if i can just complain about something really quickly because it annoys me when this forced into everything throughout the bethesda e3 press conference they were doing like video packages of people that are i guess either from the community and some people that i guess work for them as well just kind of talking about bethesda games and how they affected their lives there's some chick that got on there at one point and threw in the fact that she was LGBT. Which is, it's just so fucking frustrating. It's Pride Month right now, so of course they're going to try to throw in some LGBT inclusivity. Like, we we accept everybody here. She was, like, talking and said something about, well, it's a, I'm LGBT and it's, I'm glad to know that I can hop in and be accepted for who I am. And that's just, for me, it's so goddamn frustrating. It's so beyond force. They're just trying to get the brownie points because it's Pride Month. That stuff aside, we do have two things that I think were positive. Ghostwire Tokyo looked absolutely interesting. I don't know what the hell it is exactly. Some kind of horror type of action game. Gave a very, like, Death Stranding vibe. Maybe not that out there, not that crazy. But you see people, like, floating into the sky and stuff. And people, like... Have you ever seen the movie Left Behind? It's like that. Like, people are there and then they're gone. Their clothes are on the ground. Like, they just disappear. Very, like, uh, creepy looking game. Looked absolutely awesome. So I'm interested in this for sure. And then there's Deathloop, which uh, they have up here somewhere. Deathloop looked kind of cool. I don't know exactly. No, I mean it's like two people, like two assassins that are constantly killing each other. I don't know exactly why they come back to life and kill each other again, or what the premise of the story actually is. But it at least looked interesting. But both of these only had cinematics, uh, so we don't exactly know what the gameplay is going to be like yet. But they still looked at least intriguing. And if I can be a bit petty here towards the end of the video, there's some of these smaller content creators out here that were hyping up Starfield for this year. Like, I'm not going to name names, but you can piece together who I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys know who they are. We're hyping up Starfield. Starfield had to come out this year. Starfield was all but guaranteed to drop 2019. And it's nowhere to be found at the showcase because obviously it's not. We knew it wasn't going to be there. At least if you have two brain cells to rub together, you know that it's not going to be there. Like, we, we knew this. Todd Howard said, Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield years away 2020 might be a feasible date for starfield but that still puts out two years from when they showed it right they showed it 2018 2020 it's two years away like that's he said they were years away man we knew it wasn't coming 2019 but you had these other people out here these smaller content creators <coughs> i think we know who we're talking about 
who are like telling their fan base, like, this game's got to come out this year. Trademarks, man. Trademarks, guys. It's dropping in 2019. It's not. You're fucking stupid. Why are you lying to your fan base? Why are you lying to your viewers? Why are you lying to your subscribers? I don't understand this shit. Couldn't be me, but either way, Bethesda E3 Showcase was kind of, man, there are some interesting games on the horizon. Definitely interested in Ghostwire Tokyo. That's the main thing. Like, for sure, interested in that. Other than that, it was kind of, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. and want to stay up to date with more Bethesda content. Turn on notifications. Follow me on Twitter at TheDashingDavid. And my Discord links for social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys.